I'm Sylvie Ditchburn. I'm a, a visual artist. When I met my husband uh, 55 years ago, <laughs> we decided we wanted to move around a bit, so we came up north. So we've stayed in Townsville for, for a number of years. I went on to do a graduate diploma in museum curatorship, and then I did a master's and then a PhD. Well, I've always been in love with the landscape. I just love the natural environment and and I've done a lot of plein air painting out in um, central Australia. I've done art safaris out there and I've um, loved the tropics. I've done a lot of tropical work. We belong to the uh, Bird Observers Club and they used to have a breakfast Birdist breakfast and I'd never heard of Lone Island before and I didn't know where it was so they had the breakfast there and after we'd finished we all went wandering around having a look for birds and I was just amazed at the beautiful uh, Melaleuca paperbarks and all the lilies and the birds and so I um, took uh, a lot of photos of course and then I went back several we went back several times I did some uh, plain air painting there and sketching and so forth. I uh, happened to come across an exhibition of Nolan, Sydney Nolans, um, called Riverbend, and it was done in the round, the panorama. As artists do, I was just thinking about how I would, what I would do for my next exhibition, and you know, I thought, oh, that, that may work, um, just using. Loam Island as, as that because I wanted that immersion. I was really impressed with how Nolan's work was going for the way he um, put together his river bend because I didn't want just a series of, of individual paintings. I wanted it to be more than that. Well, the way I work with, uh, with my paintings is that um, I always like to go to uh, the environment to collect my uh, images and uh, but uh, because this exhibition was large works uh, it's too difficult for me to do them in the field so what I was doing was uh, we went out and I walked along the path and uh, sort of did a series of sketches and um, took photos and uh, then I had to come, when I came back, I just had to sort them out in how they would look together. I didn't really want it to flow on too much, but, you know, I think that, that uh, how they've worked is I wanted to have an upward um, look and I wanted to have a downward look and, you know, I wanted to have different perspectives so that people found it interesting. And also the birds, I've managed to put in the jacana bird and the cormorant, cockatoos and so forth. There, there's so many many birds and, that are around there, so it's lovely. When I decided to do it in the round, or the panorama, we came into the gallery and measured it up. Then Ken made the canvases for me. Then I had to prepare them all. And after that, I had to do the drawings. I did the drawing in pencil on, on the canvas. Well, it's taken, me, it's taken me a long time to develop this show because I put in my proposal about 2014 and uh, with this sort of a, an exhibition, you can't just do a, be a Sunday painter. It's, a, it's an exhibition that you've got to, once you start it, you really have to keep going. Otherwise, you lose the flow of it. You've got, you know, the, the, the colours will change because you've left it too long to mix up the, what you wanted and... When, when I've actually started the paintings, it's been about um, six months. I put the last brush stroke on on Sunday. <laughs> I had to keep, I had to be very diligent and keep painting every day, not all day, but every day, and until it was done. <laughs> well, I'd never really been a fan of palette knife, but I discovered the... Um, the spatulas, which palette knives are only small knives, you know, they're, and flexible. They can be a bit longer, but they're usually very flexible and thin. But I went to the, you can't get them at the art shop, you've got to go to the 
the cooking shop <laughs> and they've got quite a lot of them to use for icing cakes. <laughs> so it was an experiment to get the right shape and the, and the, the flexibility of the knife to use on it. Uh, you can't just have a little spot, it's got to be a real lump of paint and uh, you gather up your paint and then you put it on the trunk and you'll, you just get this beautiful uh, textured effect L like the paper barks that would emulate the paper barks which were a uh, beautiful feeling. Yeah. My studio at home is, uh, well we bought the house because of the studio. It was, uh, it was a family room. It was uh, ideal for me and um, it was quite quite large. Of course, it's, it's never never large enough for a painter once you start going in there, putting all your work in there. <laughs> uh, what I would do without, oh, well, you, there's lots of things like your music and the easel, <laughs> brushes, and, um, oh, and a wet palette. A wet palette is, I've managed to get, oh, you can make your own, I guess, but it's a it's quite a large one, and uh, the base of it is a sort of a spongy fabric you wet, and then you put your baking paper over the top. So it, it, your acrylic paint, and especially in this climate, it tends to dry out uh, more rapidly than you'd want, and so and then you can put a lid on it at the end of the day, so you've still got your paint there for the next day. The best advice I was given was um, don't give up, keep going, <laughs> even when you feel like no one loves you. <laughs> um, and it is true, you, you'll have doubts about yourself fairly early in your career, but if it's something you love, you've really got to stay with it. But you've got to try different things and try different techniques and have a look at a lot of art and go to some artists' workshops and so forth. It's always, you know, they're really good information to help you along the way. You can discard what you don't like. <laughs> now the challenges I face when I'm presenting my artwork is, is finding the, the right gallery for my work. But you have to have the right proposal, you know, to be accepted. And you have to be very sure of what you're going to do and uh, do your research, have it backed up by some uh, drawings and information that you're going to put forward and some previous work because the gallery is not going to take you very seriously if you haven't done that sort of thing. Also uh, selling work because it costs a lot of money to to be an artist, it's very expensive. So that's another challenge <laughs> to get over. Uh, I've been fortunate people have liked my work, so I've had a lot of support over the years. Living in North Queensland, it's, um, it has its benefits and its uh, disadvantages. Uh, you're in a smaller pool of artists, so whereas if you're in a city, you'd have a uh, there are more opportunities because it's larger, there's more things happening, more galleries, and but there's a bigger pool of artists there. So it's six of one and half a dozen of the other. Like You can always send your work down to galleries there. As regarding COVID, it was, I think it's been disastrous for the arts. But with regard to my gallery, I did have the gallery in Ogden Street for 10 years and then we moved over to Flinders Street uh, for... Uh, that opportunity came about. It was a really good position. There's not many galleries that are in the main street. Yeah, but there was no one in the CBD and uh, no one's definitely those people weren't spending money on art. So uh, yeah, we closed it down. And of course, I have got a website, but it's nowhere near as uh, good, well, yet, as the uh, shop front. Oh yes, I'd uh, really like to thank the uh, First Tucker Gallery for hosting my show and had a lovely catalogue um, and an essay by uh, Louise Martin Chu. She wrote, wrote a lovely essay 
uh, also my husband for the video he made, which um, enlarges on the exhibition, and um, and everybody who supported my work. So, thank you. <laughs>